Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Bobby. Help me out. For those of for those uh, listeners that just aren't aware of kind of your ministry or what you've kind of been up to, um, give us kind of a broad uh, background of, of where God's kind of led you in this and, and just, um, yeah, just some formational stuff about yourself and upbringing. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, I am BC <laughs> before Christ, uh, 27 years of kind of just maybe a sm- uh, kind of maybe a buffet style of faith. Um, we were brought up Roman Catholic and, um, and with maybe a smattering of, uh, spirituality in there. So I, I don't know the, the, a lot of the specific ceremonies, but they were there, you were told. So, um, continued on that for, like I said, 27 years and, um, really didn't know what I believed, uh, why I believed it and wasn't able to fully, uh, articulate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, 27 comes along and I'm at the bottom of the barrel, my bottom. And I end up uh, just responding to a book called power for living. And every, the event that happened in that, in that living room just changed me. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta find out more about this God. I mean, there's something that changed me. So that led to us uh, going into a church, um, a small church in Bismarck. And we, the rest is history. We're, we were parked there for like uh, 18 years. Um, started uh, serving in the audio video department. And then um, folks were like, you know, when we have prayer events, you show up. <laughs> Do you want to be on the spiritual advisory board? I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> And so I, I, you know, you get the blessing of being on the spiritual advisory board and then they're like, okay, wow, you actually have leadership capabilities. Would you consider being on the board? And, and then eventually the, uh, one of the lead pastors said, you know, I, I think that you should, you should get credential with the denomination, you know, like there are, you know, I, I just think that you really do good for this community and for the denomination. And so um, did that and then just kind of started getting, I don't know, frustrated with church leadership and then seeing it wasn't just our church and, and kind of just, uh, it just led me to a place where I had, I had to walk away from the church. So that was, and talk about timing, the pandemic happened. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I had, I had a great pause and I, and I uh, eventually stepped away. So that's kind of the background Mm -hmm. in the shortest pamphlet style. Yeah. Yeah. So, so mid that journey, so you're, you're at the church about 13 years and end up kind of leaving, but you had along the way done, you know, had really organized some really neat ministry on the reservation South of there. How did that start for you in terms of going, Hey, I want to reach out. I, I need to, I need to link up with this community and, and, and help via youth events or whatever, how that journey started. Yeah. So, um, um, the message, and I and I have to begin with this part. The message I got from the church, and here's where I'm at, David. I, my culture tells me that they're my relatives. Uh, whoever is a Christ follower is my relative, and that's how my rel- That's how my um, my tribe sees it. They they actually say when your relatives in Jesus want to know about us, you tell them about us. And so um, my relatives in this denomination were Pentecostal and, and, or charismatic. And so I had that in my, I had that in my head. And so I was always looking for God to talk Man, they believe that he talks this day. He talks today. He does, he does signs and wonders and miracles, you know, and I'm like looking for that but I didn't see the reality of it happening on the reservation. And so um, I got the message from Pente- from my, from my brothers and sisters in the Pentecostal charismatic uh, churches that it wasn't okay to be native. In fact, when I talked to people about going to um, powwows and such and family events, you could kind of get this, you can tell when somebody's pulling away from you or pulling away from the conversation, but they would do it. They couldn't hide it. They would just mm-hmm. be like, what do you mean powwow? What do you mean that you went to a powwow? And mm-hmm, I'm like, mm-hmm. 
and I, I just got the message that it wasn't okay to be native. So I kind of went underground and I, I actually started dancing in my basement. And I remember during those times, the reason why I share that is because I used to dance a, a genre of a category that was called fancy dancing. So mm-hmm. two bustles, you know, very, very aerobic. And I would hide in my basement. <laughs> I would dance to um, like contemporary Christian music, like Matt Redman. This, the event that I'm going to descri- descri- describe to you um, was Matt Redman's, do you feel them? Did you feel the mountains tremble? The mm-hmm. you know, almost nine minute song, however mm-hmm, long it is. Mm-hmm. I'm dancing and um, making sure the windows are closed. And I'm just, I get to a point uh, where I just collapse. And earlier that week uh, or around that time, I, I was watching TBN and um, what's his name? Reinhardt. Is it Bonky or Bunk or yeah, whatever? Bunky, yeah. Bonky? Yeah. Uh, Bonky. Okay. Bonky, yeah. He's like, tens of thousands are coming to Christ. <laughs> I'm like, holy cow. God, <laughs> God's like, he's like, dudes, I'm out of here. And he dips and he's like, I'm going across the big water to the, where the people really need me. And that stuck in my head. So I, I was, I was just exhausted. I hit my knees. And earlier that week, I just got word that an eight year old hung himself mm. on standing rock. And I was just, mm. I was, I was mad. And so I'm dancing. I'm have to hide my dance, have to hide that, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus. And, but when it came to my culture, he didn't like me. And, mm. and it just all kind of bubbled up. And I looked up to the ceiling and I remember just looking up and saying, um, don't you see, don't you care? There are, there are children. I pointed down to, uh, the reservation area. There are children down there that are killing themselves. The parents are caught up in addiction and, uh, oh, but you care about Africa and just borderline disrespectful, but really heartfelt my heart. I mean, I had tears coming. Oh, it's not coming down my face. I was, mm-hmm. I was heartbroken. If, 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 if I could ever describe lament, that's, I felt like I was lamenting. If if I had ashes and dust, I would have been throwing it up in the air. And I'll never forget, David. It was just like, I just felt him as I sat there crying. I just felt him saying, you're going, you, I'm sending you. <laughs> you get to this point where you're asking, do, do you see or don't you care? Mm-hmm. That is when the, mm-hmm. that is when it was planted in me. And so I started just approaching leadership is like, what can we go do this? And then I kind of felt like it wasn't something that was really something that was important to really climb behind. And so I was like, fine, I'll do it. I'll do it myself. And got on board with a ministry called um, on, e- on Eagle's Wings with um, Ron Hutchcraft Ministries. And that, mm-hmm. that story is crazy. They actually reached out to me because I commented on a Facebook thing and they're mm-hmm. like, hey, look, man, we'd like to come back. Mm-hmm. And that, that's what happened. God connected those two things, me and that ministry. They came back. I helped them do a, a, an event in Cannonball. Uh, Cannonball is a small community on the Standing Rock Reservation. We did an event there and I was just like, man, young people, man, God cares about native people. He cares about young people. And that, that basically was a thing. And ever since then, I've been trying to, uh, I'll take, I'll I'll take something and I'll be like, okay, that, that didn't work. This works, you know, success leaves clues. And I'm just kind of like, let's, let's, let's move it this way. And I remember my mother asking me around this time when she, when she heard that I was joining, uh, crew part-time she said who are you going to be serving and i said well just mainly college age kids and she just shook her head i'm like um i'm actually doing the job (laughs) she's just like she's like that's no that's not how we that's not how we dakota are Hmm. she said you need to figure out a way to serve the whole community i'm like what the heck and you you don't argue she's a she's a traditional elder you don't argue with them and i'm so i'm like is this from you and so I, I really thought about that, sat down. What does this look like? Mm-hmm. And the best way that I came up with is uh, in order to reach the young people uh, before college that I would have to volunteer. And so Standing Rock Young Life, Young Life is on Standing Rock. So I just started volunteering. I really love audio visual and I'm a pretty good MC. And I'm like, you know what, let's, I'm going to do that. So I did that. And then I jumped on board with a, uh, with the community center down there because they serve the entire, the rest of the community and the rest is history. And then I serve out at a uh, small um, tribal college out here in Bismarck, North Dakota called United Tribes Technical College. And yeah, I've just been, I, I've just been tweaking, tightening, removing tin, tin flashing and saying, man, that, that's not going to work. I got to mm-hmm. do this. It's, it's really, it's really cutting edge because I feel like, this wouldn't work. What I'm doing here wouldn't work in the desert Southwest. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It, it, and it probably wouldn't even work in Montana, mm-hmm. but for the five tribes here in North Dakota, I feel like it would work. So, hmm. yeah, describe some of those differences. So, for people that may not be aware, there there are there are different tensions with both living on a reservation, maybe removed from kind of a metro area, and then kind of that decision to maybe maybe you know i don't i don't want to use the word assimilate because that you know that it's just a tough tension to leave the reservation and family and then to maybe join a larger community that, that yeah just feels white or feels anglo or, or 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 just modern culture but then maybe to participate in a tribal college or and so you've you've seen both sides of that describe those different environments for us in terms of like a ministry experience or what you've seen in terms of this is kind of what it's like to minister down on the reservation versus maybe chaplaincy at the tribal college yeah for sure one of the big ones that i noticed straight away is we um and i'm saying native people we have learned a bad thing from our white relatives and that is territorialism my goodness i go down to the res and it is it is to me it feels twice as hard to get any kind of partnership because mm-hmm. i'm not of their flavor hmm. you know hmm. well i thought you said you were involved in that church in bismarck you know mm-hmm. and then they could relate it's a charismatic church you know mm-hmm. he knows where we're coming from but um, it just, there's a territorialism that we learned as native people, again, the five tribes that I'm familiar with, we learned. And, um, that's what the big difference is get down to the reservation. It's like, well, you're not really one of us. And mm-hmm. I don't know if we, we really, I mean, we do, we do, you know, like, so it's kind of like for some of the ministries, it's, it's prosperity gospel is really what it is. And there, there's a favoritism that is within these small churches and, and mm. a nepotism that's in these small churches that I'm like, I don't see, like, God's going to have to get involved. God's mm-hmm. going to have to mm-hmm. deal with it because mm-hmm. I don't see any other way that it, that it will change because it's such, there's sm- such small communities and gatherings. So immediately that's what I, that's what I saw. The chaplaincy difference is more like Jesus did. You know, and I feel like on a, on a, on a campus, in a campus context or in a high school, middle school context, you get more one-on-one there. They drop their guard a bit, Mm -hmm. you know, they're outside, Mm -hmm. they're outside their home environment, which in most cases, I mean, my, my reservation, um, it's hard to find good, positive places to go. So when they come off and they're on, they're on a campus or they're in a safe space, like in at club at young life, we're able to reach them. They drop their guard a little bit. And I'm like, I feel like this is a little bit similar to what Jesus did. Hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. how, but it feels that way. And so I'm taking, a, I'm taking notes along the way. And I'm like, this intimate, like kind of one-on-one smaller groups, not in a, not in a, a liturgical type uh, of a setting mm-hmm. is actually where most of it is going to happen. Hmm. And I'm like, we got it. Like if we could come up with a Jesus three and a half year program where we were helping them. And, you know, mm-hmm. like I think of like the Episcopal church down in standing rock, they had this, they had this idea of doing tiny houses. I think that could work. I think that, um, um, one of the young leaders that, uh, native guy from, uh, standing rock there, he, he says, yeah, I was asking, um, a father in the Episcopal church. He goes, um, they call them Chester houses, but a group of guys will live in one house Hmm. and they'll mentor and they'll Hmm. spiritual formation and, and professional development. And it, I'm like, I'm intrigued. Holy cow. If I think if we could get, I think if we could get people behind that, we could Find a place like this. I, you know, if if it's not working currently where it's at, maybe we can create they create these environments that young life on the res and chaplaincy work on on the on the college campus. But as a transitional point, we get them strong on the reservation before they make that jump to the college mm-hmm. setting. Mm-hmm. And then we're resourced because this young guy, he knows he's got contacts with uh with uh young life. I got contacts with um um, what is it? Inner varsity and with crew. I mean, it's, it's a really a win, 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 win <laughs> in so many different ways, but the biggest difference, I feel like, um, I feel like we need less is more, if that makes sense. And we need to play the long game. I'm sorry that that sounds so vague, mm-hmm. 
but that's what's coming to me. That's what I'm seeing. I've walked 47. I got 47 winters on this earth, David. And I feel like he's saying Hmm. all of that big flash in the pan stuff. Mm -hmm. There was a season. There was a time for that. That is over. I told you to be in the world. You guys siloed yourself in buildings and you guys have these things that's going on in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not attracting native people. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I got to go out and find out. So being with native young, young people, they just want to relate. You know, Mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they call me uncle Bobby for Pete's sake, (laughs) David, a lot of those kids I'm not related to. Right. They call me uncle Bobby and it's a sign of respect. They're like, Mm -hmm. when I say that I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus, they're like, man, that that's dope. Did you get all the field, man? (laughs) He's like, he's not ashamed. He's like, tells us mm-hmm. exactly how it is. Mm-hmm. So I don't mm-hmm. know if that answers your question, but I feel no, like that's that- good. Yeah, that's good. I mean, and I think, you know, the um, most people, uh, if they, so there's kind of two ways that people end up in those contexts. And 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 so maybe one is maybe they hit a powwow and, and just do something over the summer and, and kind of just try and, you know, look in that window and go, hey, we don't know this culture, but we just we just want to celebrate it in kind of an aesthetic or artistic way. But the other is that short-term missions, I think has really changed. And I think that's kind of what some of what you're describing is that for the average person that, you know, doesn't grow up on the res or has no, you know, just has never done that. Right. And then, Oh, there's a summer thing. I can go down and, and, and do this Navajo event down in Arizona, or I can, you know, I can go to Minnesota and do this, this tribal event or whatever. That's changing, I think. And you're talking about the long game. What would you give as advice for people that just don't have either those sensitivities or they go, I don't really even know where to start. It is missions, but you know, they're in the U S and I, I don't know much about native culture. How can I, how can I contribute? How can I help? Yeah. Um, I would say find out the, the first place, number one, I, and I tell this to everyone that actually takes my mother's advice. So my mother tells me, I said, mom, at the end of the pipeline protest, Dakota access pipeline protest, you could kind of feel we're crescendoing up and then it's going to drop off. And so I asked my mother, a traditional Dakota woman, mom, what do I tell my brothers and sisters? What do I tell my relatives in Jesus? And she sat there and she waited. And then she said, Bobby, tell them to come be our friends. And I'm like, hmm. what, the, what the heck is that? Come, be, I'm going to take that up to Bismarck. But the more I thought about it, David, I mean, it's John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Put down your comfort, put down your mm-hmm. preferences, put down all that stuff and come hmm. to the reservation. Be our friends, meaning live out your cultural values with us, hmm. you know, uh, among us, your kingdom culture, your kingdom ethos, live that out down here in the context of friendship, listen to us, have mm-hmm. coffee with us. And I'm like, yeah. well, well, how do we do that? What does that look like? I would say before you could even do that, you need to know who you are. So relative in Jesus, who's listening to this now, um, go spend a hundred dollars on ancestry.com or go talk even better. Go talk to um, your parents, grandma and grandpa, or auntie and uncle and find Hmm. out who your people are Hmm. because the elders are going to ask about it. When you get down there, Hmm. where do you come from? Mm -hmm. Oh, I Mm -hmm. came from Bismarck. (laughs) That's not what they're going to talk. When we say, when we say, where do you come from? When a native is talking to a native, we say, where do you come from? We're asking about your people group. Hmm. And most natives will look at you and be like, like, where do I live? Or where do I come from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people will be like, where you come from? And we know that means what tribe are you? I'm asking about a people group. So if we live that out and you get down there and you have no idea who you are, Hmm. so you can say that you, you came from this city, but actually know who your, uh, who your ancestors are. I'd say that's, that's a big number one. The long, uh, the long game that I'm seeing is it's going to take a minimum of 10 years of friendship. Hmm. Hmm. That's good. I think that um, depending on the elder, you might be inserted right away, but uh, you got to get to, you got to get to know the tribes that are there. And and that's, that's the other thing. If you're close to a reservation and it's, it's within traveling distance or somebody invites you um, it's got to be something that is a long-term strategy. That's what I mean by the Mm -hmm. law, the long game. If you are well, you're a better marketer than me and you can convince people and cast vision. Well, you need to cast vision to your boards, to your church leadership, to your organization, your parachurch organization, whoever, 
that we have to set a time frame of being there for at least 10 years and then we can reassess but that's the long game hmm. um i think that that goes far david one of the one of the people that one of the church groups that did it well and they've still been coming back they're going on 20 years hmm. um the family that um that saw this was so touched by it that they adopted them through ceremony hmm. So that means that those those missionaries now were incorporated into the family, which means that they were incorporated into the tribe. They were given Dakota names, hmm. and the people receive them. They look forward to them. They're, there's joy when they come. There's tears when they leave. Hmm. You know, they of course they say "see you later." There's no word for goodbye in Dakota. They're like "see you later," you know, until next time or whatever. But they are the perfect model for non-native communities. That if you're going to come down. You're going to serve us and you want to do missions among Native Americans. This is how I'm seeing it revealed in this region anyway. Mm -hmm. um, that's the long game. It has to be friendship. You can no longer look at us as objects to be managed. Mm -hmm. You have to look at us as, as image bearers and mm -hmm. potential image bearers of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah. Of God, the father and co-heirs in Christ. So mm -hmm. no, that's good. I mean, you know, the other thing I'll say is that just having been in in churches that tried to kind of tiptoe this line and maybe didn't have missions, but just wanted something like symbolic to maybe get off the hook in terms of white guilt. And so, I mean, literally, there's churches that will do a weekend, and yeah. and I've experienced this, and I I absolutely just cringe. It just makes me just die inside to think that we can just do a weekend, and then um, you know we'll get some representative from from some tribal nation. They'll forgive us. We'll forgive them, and then we're just good. I mean, to help us out a little bit with that. I mean, for for people that don't understand either the long game or that grievance or land or just the contextual nature of how rich this tradition is in terms of longstanding, both animosity towards white communities and 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 legitimate, within generational struggle. I mean, what is that like on the res and, and how can we better mend those differences and, and approach those areas with care and concern? Yeah. Number one, it, it is frustrating. The young people are, the young people are, um, have begun picking on leaders, tribal leaders now. And I would say it's, it's moved on from, so, <laughs> and you, you would probably know this knowing me. Um, if you're not being picked on by the natives, you're, you're not liked. <laughs> <laughs> but we've we have we've actually the young people have actually moved on a, I'd say a step more and mm -hmm. they've actually started saying things about leadership that is that is outside of just picking on them so they'll they'll walk around and say oh you're just acting like you're acting council mm -hmm. and I'm like what's that supposed mm -hmm. to mean mm -hmm. they're like when you go around and you shake hands you're just acting like one of them Hmm. Basically, what they're saying is you're not acting like a leader. They only do this for show. And, hmm. it, and we can set our watches by it. Every couple of years or every few years, they act like mm -hmm. this. They don't, no changes ever stick. Hmm. They're frustrated. Young people are frustrated. Um, when they're putting down their leaders, they're they're frustrated. And the reason why I highlight that is because I've been in, I've been with native leaders, you know, uh, council or chairman. I've been with leaders and I've asked that question. Why are we pushing away from the table? You know, so I'm giving you just the native, you know, flavor right now. Why are we pushing away from the table? You know, we, we talk about forgiveness and reconciliation. Why, why wouldn't we be at that table? You know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I asked the question and one uh, and a few of the responses that I got uh, one in specific or one in particular just said, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're in uh, tribal politics, when you're in politics for as long as we've been in tribal politics and um, in politics period, it gets old. Mm -hmm. It gets old. It's just, it's just, it, they're just saying it. They're tokenizing us, but in a different way now, mm -hmm. Hey, let's, let's forgive and, and hug it out, you know, and, but they don't mean it. Hmm. And, and there's not, there's really nothing there. There are no, there's no traction behind it. And so when you have the church coming down saying, let's forgive one another, it just feels icky. Hmm. It's like, you're not, you're not respected. And did, did the government tell hmm. you to come down here? Hmm. Hmm. Because we haven't felt it from them. And what you're doing here is you're tokenizing us. Hmm. It's just, it's frustrating. Hmm. 
You know, mm-hmm. so you have the youth frustrated, you have the elders and the tribal, you have all of these people frustrated. And then when I, when I, um, I hear from, and, and you can at any time where I feel well, you're like, you want to, you want to double, you want to double click on something or, you know, kind of pinch out or swipe in or whatever, let me know. Um, but from, from the church point of view, we have got to stop with this. I, and mm-hmm. I'm saying, I'm saying it as a relative, you and I are relatives in Jesus. And that's where I'm speaking from. Mm-hmm. We have got to stop with this. Let's forgive one another. Mm-hmm. And Bobby, why can't they just get over it? I mean, yeah. you did. Yeah. I'm like, did I, did I get over it? Mm-hmm. Because we're st- my relatives down there are still being treated, you know, and I see how mm-hmm. they're treated in this community. Mm-hmm. And native young kids tell me how they're treated in this community mm-hmm. when they walk in stores and the things that are said to them on basketball mm-hmm. courts. Am mm-hmm. I over it? Mm-hmm. Would Jesus be over what's happening to his people? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, well, gee, you know, I've been called a liberal Christian for Pete's sakes just because mm-hmm. I've questioned the whole, like, do they need to get over it? Or, you know, I understand where you're coming from, but mm-hmm. can't you just for one have some type of empathy? or mm-hmm. compassion mm-hmm. in the truest sense. Cause both you and I, you're, 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 uh, uh, you're an academic, uh, David, you know, that the truest, that the word passion means suffering. Mm-hmm. You know, people are all like, Oh, he's such, such a passionate speaker. What the hell's that? No, yeah. you know, have some compassion, try to relate with where they're at before you go down there and mm-hmm. tell elders or a guy like me, that is mm-hmm. a bridge. You're telling me, why can't they just get over it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So those are the two camps, mm-hmm. non-native. And I just, I highlighted more so um, the church in mm-hmm. this, in this example, but I hear it in the community too. So I have a membership at the Y and you, mm-hmm. you hear that mm-hmm. you hear from white folks all the time. Oh, we, oh, we can't say that we're white men. You, you know how that goes. And it's like, there are other natives in the locker room right mm-hmm. now. You are, do you want mm-hmm. one of us to come over there and engage? Mm-hmm. You said it so loud. Why are, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like in every area right now, we have forgotten that we are related, especially from the mm-hmm. native area. So what I tell young people is how many of you are practicing um, traditional? You do it every, you know, and the hands go up mm-hmm. and I'll say, um, so you know that when we finish our prayers as Dakota and Lakota people, we say, Midakuye um, Oyasi, all my relatives, all my relations. Yep, yep, you know, shaking their heads. I said, so you know that uh, the, one of the teachings is, is that the, our white relatives are part of that circle. Hmm. I said, so why? Why, if you know that, do you walk around throwing shade and saying, that they are the cause of our problems. Like right now, they're the cause of our problems. Are they down here selling drugs? Are they down here doing the things that are are the current problems for us? Maybe, but it's such a small amount. Mm -hmm. And you can see for the first time, like, okay, got my attention. And I'll finish with this, David. I'll say, and this is like during Young Life Talk. So the room's full with native young people. And I'll say, um, when you do that, when you take the white people, And you put them outside the circle, like they're doing to us, like you, some of you have told me, but when we say it, when we say me, yeah, see all my relatives, all my relations, except for the white people, we are not living out that cultural value of Mm. the seven council fires of the Ocheti Shakui. We are not living that out. So if we're not living that out, are we truly Dakota or Lakota? Mm. I'm telling you what, David, they look at you like, Mm. I had never thought of it that way. So when I'm with natives, I'm telling them there's power in acknowledgement. And when I'm with the church, there's power in acknowledgement. When Mm -hmm. I'm with white people, there's power in acknowledgement. Look, I don't think we're ever going to get to an apology. I don't think that there's ever going to be that thing. Hmm. But can we have these small wins where we're just like, Hmm. that bad thing happened Mm -hmm. and acknowledge? You and I both benefit from Mm -hmm. the power of acknowledgement. Because we both know it's confession, right? Mm -hmm. When we Mm -hmm. acknowledge our sins before creator God, Mm -hmm. if we just acknowledge what happened in the past, I think we can be able to move on in a better way. But what I'm seeing in both in, in all of these places, native, non-native in the church 
It's just the ignorance. It's the ignorance of not wanting to get to know one another. And that's, Hey man, I can tell you native people need to need to do a better job of get of relating with, of, of people in the church and white people, non-native people. We need, we need to too, but also from the body of Christ, Mm -hmm. I can tell you, Mm -hmm. we've got to stop tokenizing the tribes of North America. Yeah. We are ignorant. David, you know, I mean, you, I know you're an academic, you know, that they're, we're ignorant. Well, I mean, it, even, to, even to just take acknowledgement that like, there is some, you know, that there, there is some need for, for tribes to just, to, to work on that side as well. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, it, it's, the church has a long way to go. It just oh, does. It, it, it's, it's got, it's got language to learn. It's got culture to appreciate. It's got people to see as, as individuals that are, should be received as Christ and all of those things. Um, I mean, the other thing that I wanted to touch on is that I think we're often unaware of how our enculturation as the church has taken, has taken place in large, in very large part without those voices, right? So we just, we have our worship style, we've got our preaching style, we've got our altar call, we've got our, you know, our fellowship and whatever. Those places have not been informed to my knowledge, almost at all by any native culture at all. And so in some ways, I think missions is highlighting church planting and missions is highlighting a very important thing. And that is this, it's very strange to ask people to cross multiple cultural barriers to participate in these spaces that we just think, oh, that's just church culture. It might just be Anglo church culture. It (laughs) probably is, right? So how do we, I mean, help us out with that. How can the church better make those spaces places where native people feel comfortable where they do feel loved and invited and 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 that are hospitable in ways that are deeper and richer than just a swag bag on a sunday morning or something you know what i'm saying (laughs) how can we get better about intaking people in a way that just goes we actually care yeah i think one of the big the big ways is uh maybe visual stuff Hmm. and um i'm going to highlight uh something depending on who your listeners are uh the episcopal church hmm. david you, you walk into episcopal church on the res it is visually hmm. uh welcoming hmm. like look at there's a buff i'm not kidding behind uh saint luke's church in uh 48s an episcopal church saint luke's church in 48s has a winter count up on the thing, you know what the winter count is about. It, by the way, the artist is uh, Dakota Goodhouse, uh, a mm-hmm. local, a local uh, uh, philosopher and uh, teacher. The, the 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 what's painted on there, the Gospel of Luke. Hmm. It's behind the altar. It's a it's. You look around and you see a star quilt that was gifted to the church, and hmm. there's a story behind mm-hmm. it. And mm-hmm. You see it. It's held in this place in a place of honor. You know, mm-hmm. and people are like, what's the big deal with that? I don't see the flags as the prominent, prominent position, hmm. the American flag right. and the, and the Christian flag. They're not the prominence. If when you walk in, you're like, oh, this is a place that uh, really thinks Jesus is a big deal. And, and, oh, look, there's some mm-hmm. native flavor in here. Mm-hmm. The fact that they can see the incense. I think that that is great. I think if more churches could, um, do their own research about the Hebrew people and the hmm. altar of incense. I think that that would be visually hmm. uh, in, you know, another visual. Here's what's crazy is that I'm starting to hear that native young people really like the, the dimmed lights, which I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Cause yeah. it just feels to me, it right. feels like a show. I, right. and that's me. Right, right, right. But if that's the door, who am I? Who am I to hold back? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there there's, but they call it, they call these places where they're saying that it's called prayer time and it's really structured. So Mm -hmm. yes, they'll have those moments, but it'll begin with prayer and it'll end with prayer. And Mm -hmm. a lot of these, a lot of these young people are, are finding, finding creator there Mm -hmm. and it, and it opens the door. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm telling you what, the, the, if there is ways, if there, you know, cause you and I both know David, I mean, if I were to pull out, you know, one of my um, mm-hmm. history books, yeah. what's Jesus going to be depicted as, as ethnic, mm-hmm. it's going to be white. Right. Mm. And you and I both know he's a Hebrew man. He's probably mm-hmm. got darker color skin, probably got the black hair like me. 
Um, but I think that there's some, there's some small, there's some small wins that, um, like you said, if you, if you come into a place and it's so busy or whatever, I, I don't think that, I don't think that that is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It just, it's just too much. So I highlight the Episcopal church because when, a, when, and there are some Lutheran churches out there. There's some Catholic churches out there that do it too. Mm -hmm. But when you walk in, you can see art right away. Hmm. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you go into most of the places now, it just feels like an auditorium, right? You know, I'm yeah. going to get entertained right now. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have that, that sense of wonder and mm -hmm. awe, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, I think of like uh, more traditional places like uh, Orthodox, you know, they have the kind of stasis mm -hmm. and so does, mm -hmm. so does the Episcopal the Episcopal thing, but there's a sense of wonder and awe for mm. Pete's sake, my own tribe calls creator God, you know, the one true, when I ask them and I press the issue, do mm -hmm. we believe in one God? Yes. Uh, one of the names we have for him is, um, you know, uh, uh, Wakantanka, you know, mm -hmm. and one of those translations is, is the great mystery. Hmm. Some of those things provide that, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's just beyond that place back there that those, that those, those, uh, those servants of creator are doing what's, what's, the, there's some mystery there. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that answers your question. No, that's good. That's helpful. I mean, I think, and, and the other thing is that, um, you know, for native people in some ways that, that tension with the Christian and traditional thing is, is a place that you found yourself you know, in different kind of seasons. I mean, describe that journey for us a little bit. There is a need for kind of reconciliation, understanding your history. There's no, there should be absolutely no conflict with that and, 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 and Christ. I mean, if, if God is real and if Jesus Christ is who he says he is, you can be fully native and fully Christian. Describe how those tensions kind of, yeah, how do you, how do you manage those? Like, how much traditionalism you know should be yeah. involved or could be your language or how do we how does the church start to either get comfortable with that or just to say you know what contextualization is important we do oh. have to we have to take steps we've gotta we've gotta take people where they're at and as well there's no conflict here how do you manage those tensions yeah i i think for me one of the things that um um i love about my culture is this that they'll say things like we have a ceremony called um humbletcha you go up on a hill and you fast for a couple days like full days and you're up there with nothing but you know just like the elements and maybe a blanket and some tobacco mm -hmm. ties but it's called crying out for a vision is the translation um and when you come down from there the people want to know you know whoever's around mm -hmm. you they want to know mm -hmm. what creator gave you in that moment mm -hmm. And sometimes people think people receive that they're supposed to go in Sundance. Sometimes they're supposed to do it in a specific way. That's where I, that's where I kind of really lean into. It's like, they know that once creator speaks, you have to follow. Hmm. Once he has said, you better do it. The people will hold you accountable. And so when I hear that, not because there are more and more people that don't uh, native people that don't follow traditional ways and mm -hmm. traditional people see it too. Mm -hmm. So think about the, think about the relatedness that we have there. Traditional people on the, on the reservation, mainly uh, um, Ocheti Shakoni Sioux people, uh, the great Sioux nation, we're seeing this exodus from this relating with God. Like mm -hmm. the church is seeing that and mm -hmm. churches, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we share relatedness there. So when I think about that, that is a place that I come from. Um, when I think about um, guys like intellectuals like uh, Sky Jatani, and I can't remember who he was interviewing, but just really described it well on how God's call to each one of us is the same call that Abraham had. And it is a call to adventure. Come out from your security. Come out from your family. Come out from all of that structure to a land that I will show you. So I say that to preface this, that time in Pentecost is that, that 18 years that I sent, that I, that I journeyed among the Pentecostals was God ordained. <laughs> he wanted me to learn uh, another variant of mystery, you know, because we, we call him the great mystery. Mm -hmm. we're, we're comfortable in not having all the answers when it comes mm -hmm. to creator God. If anything, I think that that's one of the things that we can bring to the church right now. Mm -hmm. The church is highly intellectual and we can come and say, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's adorable. They think that they have got right. figured out. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. I think that we could bring, we could bring some of that to the table. Um, I forgot where I was going there when it came to the church side, the church side, what was your question again? So I can re get reconnect that. Yeah. Just the, just that tension of, of, of being native and going, I can, I, okay. I need to reconcile yeah, yeah, how I feel about traditionalism and the, and the church. And do I have to give up my culture and then, yeah. you know, or, or do I have to give up my faith to be traditional or, you yeah, know, how do sure. you. Yeah. So the journey, I, I told you that first part of the journey, when I, when I collapsed on the floor there and I prayed, that's when I first started feeling like it, like it, it is possible, possible to be 100% Dakota and follow Christ mm -hmm. and people, both sides, native and non-native are saying it's not possible. It mm -hmm. is possible. You and I, David, you've went through the schooling. You went through some of the same training as me. You and I both know that the disciples continue to be Jews even after the Holy Spirit came. Mm -hmm. So why is it okay for the Jews to continue to be Jews. Mm -hmm. And it's not okay for natives to continue to be natives, but still be followers of Christ. So I, mm -hmm. as I thought about that in my head, after that event happened, I'm like, okay, tell me what you want me to do. Serious, prayed about it. What do you want me to do? And David, immediately, I started feeling like you need to get a name. And I'm like, hmm. What does that mean? And check it out. What's cool about the, the relatedness of my culture in the Bible is think about how many times names of places change mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This happened, set up some stones. I'm calling it this, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. God is always about changing names, giving people an, an, another name. That mm -hmm. sounds really native to me. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at it, I'm like, okay, I will do that. What do you, um, so I reach out to my uncle. I feel like I'm supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm just heeding. I call I call them nudges because that's what it feels like. Pay attention, you know, uh, pay attention. And so I'll sit there and I'm like, I had being with a parachurch organization who tends to lean a bit more reformed. Hmm. I love the reform point of view. I do, David, high on gospel, but it can get caught up in the five points hmm. of Calvinism mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just be in another system. Sure. You know, and then all of a sudden they're judging one another. Oh, mm -hmm. he's not a true mm -hmm. five pointer. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I think about all these crazy aunties and uncles in the faith in the church of yeah. Jesus Christ, I'm like, this is so cool because I'm, I'm, I'm more related with folks that are in the church, in the Orthodox tradition, in the Catholic tradition, in mm -hmm. all of the, in all the various um, Baskin Robbins, that is Christianity of Protestantism. Yeah. I'm like, his family is so beautiful mm -hmm. and I can learn from each one of them. Hmm. And he has given me his Holy spirit. And if I um, go against my conscience in the Holy spirit, I'm going to know it. The church has tr been trying to manage people in such a way, especially native people. They're like, Oh, we believe they, those seven responded to our altar call. Hmm. We better control how the Holy spirit manages their lives. Quick going to Powell, quick going Mm -hmm. It's like we immediately mm -hmm. show our unbelief. And, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you what, David, mm -hmm. the elders are calling me out on it. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the hits on the reservation for the stupid stuff mm -hmm. that, the, that the church is doing. But that's a part of the, the cross and the call, like my black relative yeah. said. He's like, you got to, that, that, you know what? You got to take those hits, mm -hmm. but you got to take them in a better way than other people that came down to the reservation. You got to, mm -hmm. you got to, you got to at least listen. So that's mm -hmm. what I try to do. I hope that answers your question. No, that's good. That's good. I and, think it's going to change from person to person is ultimately what I'm saying. Yeah, that's good. Well, and one of the things that I think native culture really has a lot to teach just, just larger church culture is certainly about things like discernment. And so, you know, one thing that we've talked about a little bit just in the past is just how there's this innate spirituality in in growing up native, in growing up on the res, yep. or maybe leaving the res and 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 go, you know moving to kind of like larger American culture, there is this process process of discernment, and I don't necessarily just mean some people talk about the kind of like code shifting and I gotta talk white and I gotta you know I gotta I gotta fit in and whatever. That's not exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking more about that. Native people are highly acutely aware of dark spirits. Of 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 potentially the voice of Creator God through through all kinds of things like art and and culture and language and history and all of those things, how how can we better listen to 
that because there's also that need for discernment, right? You can't just yeah. give yourself to all these spirits and 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 just yeah. go with the flow. How can we how can we learn from our brothers and sisters that are native in terms of growing in discernment, growing in listening to the Holy Spirit, um, and 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 also just the reality of of opposition, the reality of of darkness or generational curse or all those things. Yeah. No. Wow. Great, great question. I mean, that right there could be like two podcasts, but I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up. Um, this is what I'm learning. This is my experience. Um, so when I, when I, when I look at um, the, just the, I'm telling you that the, the reason why I'm smiling now is, is the what ifs I'm seeing it out there of the beauty that native people could bring to the church. Hmm. I feel like we could, we could, uh, because they, native elders tell me all the time, like your, your relatives and Jesus don't believe what they say. And I, I always struggled with that. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? What they're saying is that they're not living out their values. They're not living mm. out their cultural values. You know, we have Pentecostals that come down here, the Baptists that come down here around July. Serious. You can set your time on what <laughs> church can show up on the reservation. You're like, holy cow, is that late in the summer? <laughs> Creepy white vans showed up. <laughs> Baptists from the East Coast showed yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm telling I'm I'm telling you what, we as the church, number one, one of the things that we can learn from native people is recapturing a sense of wonder and awe when it comes to creator God. Hmm. We do not have him figured out. David, I see it behind you and I look to my right and I see my my own personal library and I'll just read you some of them. The uh, cat, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Book of Concord, Reform Systematic Theology, Systematic Theology by Grudem, and I can go on and on mm-hmm. and on about mm-hmm. the flavors that I've read. Mm-hmm. Native people will get in my face like, you're not going to learn about them in a book. Hmm. We get what you're talking about when it comes with that scripture there. We mm-hmm. understand what you're saying there, but from somebody mm-hmm. else's, that's just a small piece. Hmm. I think that we need to be open to that. When a native comes in and, and um, um, comes in and is a part of your church or your mm-hmm. congregation and a drug addict comes in and says that they're seeing things and the native says, I believe him mm-hmm. stand with the native. Mm-hmm. You and I are folks that believe in the unseen, right? Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have not seen God. We have not seen Jesus Christ. We believe in this Holy Spirit that Jesus described, you know, mm-hmm. in John. Mm-hmm. We believe in angels. It's mm-hmm. like we 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 want we need to be reminded of that old way again mm-hmm. of the of the faith, you know. Mm-hmm. What must we do to be saved? And Jesus or what must we be do? What must we be doing to be doing the works of God? Jesus said, "Believe on Him who He sent." It's mm-hmm. as simple as that. Hmm. Na- most native people will will press the issue with me and be like, "You, you really don't believe that? Hmm. Uh, how so? Because you guys are always trying to prove with science and with history hmm. that He. Hmm. Why don't you just believe? Hmm. Indigenous elder. Um, indigenous elder wisdom says it like this, David, they say, um, we, what, what they see in the young people is, is, uh, um, they need to see first and then they'll believe. But what we taught them was to believe. And then you'll see, Hmm. not kidding. That Hmm. is from an elder. Hmm. I I was interviewed on a, uh, K, uh, KLND. That's a um, radio station out of little Eagle, South Dakota, standing rock reservation. And I, w- I wrote it down, David. It was so mm. impactful. I wrote that down and now I've converted it to memory. I think that we need to remember a wonder and sense of all we, we don't have God figured out. Um, I think that that is number one, uh, a start, a starting point. And then we need to ask more questions. We need to be uncomfortable. Hmm. We need, hmm. we need to, because my tribe believes different than other mm-hmm. tribes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from family to family too. So you're going to have to do the hard work. It's going to push you into places where you're going mm-hmm. to have to believe that Jesus is act- actually given all power and authority. And that at the name of Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. You're going to have to believe it mm-hmm. because they, mm-hmm. they believe in the, they believe in the spirits. David, I'm telling you, kids tell me all the time. We were sitting at home and mm-hmm. we saw that table move or that chair mm-hmm. move. They see manifestations of mm-hmm. that. But yet, as as believers, as followers right. of Jesus Christ, we're like, oh, mm-hmm. that's the devil. Um, 
who are we at war with? I mean, can somebody double check? Hey, open the Bible. See who yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like we have taken our focus off things. I think that we have got to get back to the basics ultimately. Hmm. And I think that as we move forward, some of that stuff is going to, is kind of going to work itself out, but here's where it's frustrating. I really didn't answer your question today. <laughs> and, and it's intentional. Here's yeah. why it's intentional is because the church, those that say that they're followers of Jesus Christ, that they're disciples and they're believers, the church didn't, you and I both know the history. We tried to make native people and, and this bothers natives when I, when I include myself in that, but I'm a relative. I'm in the, I'm in the church, but we tried to take language, a way of life. We destroyed, Hmm. we destroyed as the church, the government used us to destroy a way of life in a people. I believe the church has got to be the medicine back. Now we need to help them reclaim their rightful Hmm. place within the world. And Hmm. when they start coming. And it's going to be frustrating because some of those folks are going to say, I see these things. I hear these things. And we're going to have, we're going to, have mm-hmm. to know what we believe and why we believe it and mm-hmm. clearly communicate it. And that is where the, 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 the double fold medicine is going to happen mm-hmm. with some of my tribal people, the five tribes here and the tribes of, a, of the world, really. Mm-hmm. We're going to have that mutual medication that's going to happen. That medicine is going to rub off on one another, but we have to do the hard work. Hmm. You're going to learn things that you're going to call me up and you're going to be like, Bobby, I just hooked up with this, mm-hmm. this tribal member here where I live. And he said this, hmm. and I'm going to be like, bro, I've never heard that before. Hmm. But mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I don't think there is a, I think if, if there is a one-stop shop, what is the answer? The answer is be in the world and not of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's we got to go back into the world. So, well, yeah, I mean, and, 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 you know, sometimes contemporary American culture and certainly, you know, the, the kind of like Western civilization, Europe model is like, oh, we don't have a culture. I mean, we just, you know, we're just, we just live in a city and, and which is all garbage because it, you know, we all are enculturated. We all live in patterns and, and, and choices and consumerist choices and all these things. And so, I mean, I think that's really helpful to people, you know, We'll we'll keep this short. I've just got two more yeah. questions here, but one is just how how um, the other thing I'm not necessarily convinced of is that churches have prayed effectively for for native people. Ooh. You know, maybe it's been like, hey, maybe they'll maybe they'll come to faith and and will look good. I I've, I've seen that. I've seen, hey, we've got this missions night. Oh yeah. Oh, and we got to remember the Native Americans because they're in this country. But it's kind of you know, it's not a foreign nation. But but hey, missions. It's missions week. I mean, you know. How can we be consistent in praying for Native people in a way that that actually, you know, that does touch God's heart, that does resonate with their their actual needs and and the youth and 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 all of those things? How can we be mindful of that in prayer? Yeah, no, such a such such great question. I think one of the the things that uh, if you're on the reservation or wherever it is, because they're you know I'm urban native, but I still I travel back all the time. I have a lot of windshield time. If they let you pray for them, ask them, you know, may I pray for you? You know, listen to their story. Mm-hmm. You might not get to pray right away. You know, mm-hmm. you might have to wait for 20 minutes for them to share with you. Mm-hmm. But this is a part of what I think that um, listening to the story is a part of the prayer, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like, uh, I think it, I can't remember where it is in, in, in the Old Testament, but it talks about, in, in, and if you remember, you can remind me, but uh, talks about, and they gathered together and talked about the things of God. A scroll was written about what they were. I think that that talking, just listening to the story, that will give us enough to pray for them. Hmm. Um, that will give us the the what would you call it? The not the ammunition. That will give us the arrows that we're gonna that we're gonna shoot up the creator hmm. and say, relative so and so would like her hmm. loved one to come out of addiction mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that uh, to pray effectively. Um, ask creator to have compassion on us. I know he, I know he does. I do David, but ask him to have compassion on us and to send his people again. Like a lot of people have forgot about it, again, have forgot about native America hmm. and they've done it in a way where we're just, we've, we've become check in the box, but that he would send his, his men and women of peace that he had send his laborers um, 
if you're going to, you know, if you're not at the point to make the jump just yet, um, I, are you familiar with Maslow's needs of hierarchy? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, you know, yeah. pray to that end hmm. that we have those basic mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And by time the missionary comes down, we're ready to hear it. Hmm. There are mm-hmm. kids on the reservation mm-hmm. that don't have, yeah. they're, they're telling yeah. me as of today, they don't have a safe place to be. Hmm. I close my door. It's not really private, Bobby. Hmm. I don't feel safe. Hmm. Pray for those things in Maslow's needs of hierarchy. Pray for, for mental health issues. Mm-hmm. You know, there we don't have the counselors that mm-hmm. are available mm-hmm. to pray for that. Pray that mm-hmm. God would, God would uh, place um, his leaders there, not the mm-hmm. traditional, not the Christians, but people that are walking around with Solomon's heart that have, what did Solomon say? Um, give me an understanding heart to know the difference between good and evil, that the leaders would have that Mm -hmm. pray that, that the, that our children would be protected from the, from the Mm -hmm. flipping Mm -hmm. drug, the drug trafficking Mm -hmm. and the sex trafficking that's happening. They're driving down to our res, Dave, Mm -hmm. David, they're, they're, they are, they are telling let's go party. And then Mm -hmm. they take them into months and years of, of, and because mm-hmm. of the missing murder in indigenous, there's mm-hmm. no movement. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows. They just now started capturing the data. Pray to that end. Mm-hmm. Pray that God, when God does, pray for partnerships between the, the BIA and the mm-hmm. local authorities, highway patrol. Pray for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, God has those agents of wrath. So I'm telling you, we, we need help. We don't have, I know everything is kind of like stressed right now, but think of that times a hundred. Hmm. on reservations all over the United States. Pray that God would send solutions. Um, And I think that we would be a bit more ready to listen. If that Mm -hmm. makes sense. No, that's good. That's good. And, and is, are there any, are there any resources? I mean, you are are a resource guy. If if people just said, where do I start? I mean, I think, you know, you've talked a little bit about it. It's like, yeah, there, there are, there are thousands of missing indigenous women throughout the Midwest that are just, I mean, read on it, like immerse yeah. yourself. Don't just, don't just pick up a New York times article, immerse <laughs> yourself in it, pray about it. This is yeah. God's heart. Like it's, it's scary for, it's scary for rural native women in, in, in just locked into cultures of abuse or, or, you know, read about what happened in Canada and don't just gloss over it. Like exactly. sit there with the reality that thousands of children's voices are snuffed out mm-hmm. and that you have generational grieving that may take a century or two, right? Like it's not just a, it's not just a three year fix to go, Oh yeah, we're fine with what the Catholic church did in Canada or, or, or what church culture has done <laughs> yep, in, in exactly. whitewashing people or whatever. Um, is there any 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 books that have been helpful to you in in maybe just starting some of those journeys, or if people just said, "Where do I start? How do I?" Wh- is there any good information or, or or a book or something that you're aware of that yeah. may just start people down that path or be helpful? Wow, great! Again, a great question. Um, I would say you got to read native authors right now. They they're they they are carrying medicine with them. I'm not saying that there's. Other people that are not learned and kind of educated that can understand this stuff, mm-hmm. but got to lead, read native law authors. So I would say, and he's got about 19 books, uh, Dr. Charles Eastman should be on your shelf. Hmm. All of his books should be on your shelf. Hmm. He revealed, he, and he was a, he, he was a follower of Jesus, but he does some, I mean, he does a critique, he does critiques and he, hmm. he gives you a, a look inside the culture too, of what he remembers pre-reservation when the massacre at wounded knee happened, he was the attending physician, if hmm. you will, hmm. Hmm. right there on standing rock as the injured came in. Hmm. So he, and he was actually, uh, um, if you watched, watch the movie, bury my heart at wounded mm-hmm. knee. Mm-hmm. Read the book, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. read, read native authors like, um, let me see, David Troyer, the heartbeat of wounded knee, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. a Chippewa guy from um, Minnesota, Elacara Deloria, Vine Deloria. And people are like, oh, I don't know about Vine. No, he's a philosopher. Read mm-hmm. it. Um, mm-hmm. Who's the other guy? Uh, he, he wrote there, there, you know, read some of these native authors is a good place to start. Uh, Mark Charles, um, he has some good stuff out there on the doctrine of discovery. Uh, I think he wrote a book with uh, Sue Chan Ra uh, called um, Unsettling Truths. Read that, hmm. but go into it. Here's, and this is most important. You, David's listeners or uh, listeners of this podcast, pray before it because you're hmm. going to get angry. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Ask creator to make sure that he protects your heart. Mm. I, when I do that, when I do my research, that's what I pray before and after, mm. because they are unsettling mm-hmm. truths. It is mm-hmm. acknowledge. You're going to have to acknowledge that this stuff happened. Yeah. So those, that is the low hanging fruit right now. I know that mm-hmm. there are a lot of my bosses, Donnie and Renee Begay. Donnie has a, has a, a blog site called the talking circle. Donnie is, he's got some insights too. Right now, it's cool to be alive in America and in the world because God is raising up native voices and they are true medicine. So mm, like good. I said, uh, Dr. Charles Eastman, Elicaro Deloria, got to read the native native folks, hear what they're saying about what happened. Yeah. And then I think you can start taking some of those academic voices in there. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll try and get links to those and, and just try and resource people. How can people, uh, so just describe a little bit of your work with crew. So you're, you're working as a missionary, both with crew, and then you've also been given kind of a, a stint uh, at United Tribes Technical College and Bismarck as chaplain. How can people link up with your work or if they want to give or, or, yeah. or just kind of find out what you're up to or, or help you or however it is, how can they link up with your work and what you're up to? Yeah. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> Um, I think the first, the, the first thing is, um, to link up with me and it, what you asking this is keeping, is keeping me 100% uh, responsible for where I'm at right now. Uh, creator has given me the nudge to really be intentional when it comes to a YouTube channel. And I've hmm. only been putting small things in hmm. there hmm. and it's been a, it's been recovery from a native point of view. It's been okay. theology. I have an idea for for in in the doctrine of discovery in manifest destiny some of these documents actually hmm. had wording the declaration of independence talks describes us as merciless indian mm-hmm. savages mm-hmm. 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 and so i'm like merciless indian savages that would be a really cool you know i'm going to start a podcast that's called or a youtube channel yeah, yeah, that's yeah, called yeah. that's called savage theology hmm. you know i'm on youtube Cool. Cool. You can, so you can, okay. you, you can go there. You can, you know, find out about some of the work there. I speak recovery. I, I speak native spirituality, just kind of native uh, philosophy, things like that. My work at out at uh, United tribes. And because the other part of that work, we're in, we're still in pause with the chapel chapel work down there. The other part of that work is, is serving more of a, like a liaison mm-hmm. uh, on the doing volunteer work in the reservation and then being involved in the legislature. Hmm. I actually make it, I'm intentional in being in those Bible studies. I get invites to some of those Bible studies mm-hmm. with leaders. Hmm. Um, so to maybe if you want to take part of that work, you're not at a point to go and you're like, Hey man, I'll, you know, I want to support you as you mm-hmm. go. I have a crew page. So mm-hmm. this parachurch mm-hmm. organization is giving me a crew page. If you go to crew, uh, I think it's crew, w.crew.org. I think it's crew.org. Yep. Yeah. And then give. Yep. And you give. search my yep. name. Sure. I think it's in there as Bob or just search Gray Eagle for last sure. name. Gray I'm Eagle. the only one. <laughs> You'll find me. <laughs> Maybe that's a problem. Let's, let's change that, right. man. I, I, David, it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I tell yes. people that all the time here. Yeah. I'm like, they look at me and they're like, it's so magical. Look at him. He look at him. His, his dandruff is, is glitter. (laughs) Like, it's like we're unicorns. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and, and no, and truth be told you uh, help me out. Is your mom as half Filipino as well? Is she not? No, that's my biological father. Okay. 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 Um, uh, Portuguese, Spanish, and Filipino, okay. my mother is oh, full-blooded Sisi Tawa Wapetua Dakota Oyate. Okay, so she's she's like Sisi Tawa Oyate, and yeah. then your dad has just kind of this this cocktail that also includes <laughs> Filipino. Well, and and truth be told, I think that's a good place. Hey, people are contextual. People have histories. Exactly, histories matter. Culture matters. Like these things are. Uh, they are important and they're also tools that God has given us to reach the world. And so you've got this really cool place of standing between some of those worlds. I j- thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being, you know, for listening to the spirit and not just giving up on either your own recovery and, and certainly not on native people. God is going to bless the earth through a man. I, I, I believe that. I don't think that's just some 70s prophecy by Billy Graham, right? This isn't yeah. just a one-off. It's not just a, oh yeah, we got to pray for these people to admissions night. 
God could change the world through native people and will do Amen. that. He will do that. Yes. Whether yes. or not whether or not we are allowed to even be blessed by that, right? This could happen apart from the church. It Big will time. happen if the church won't be used in it, native people will rise up and do it and we'll we'll be going we 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 had the chance we, to participate we, in that. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we can give and yeah, finish it out. I mean, how yeah. how is God going to use native people? How have you seen him him work in in those ways? Yeah, so the cliche thing is everybody's throwing around the Graham quote, you know. What's what's crazy about that David is this, is that he's called America's pastor, right? Everybody knew him as America's pastor. So America's pastor said in 1975 mm -hmm. that the Native American can, is a sleeping giant. You know, don't forget these folks. You know, they could be the evangelist that'll help win America for Christ. Mm -hmm. Yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that I'm gravitating towards now are Crazy Horse and Black Elk. Black Elk said, and to your vision to finish up this this time with you. Uh, Black Elk said that uh, the hoop of our people is broken, but in the seventh generation, which is right now, the seventh generation, there will be a new hoop made up of all colors. Hmm. So he saw that there wasn't just going to be native people, that creator is going to do a work in this time, and it's going to include all people. Hmm. That's Black Elk. Crazy Horse said that the red nation, you know, the red nation, our people, it's, it's been put down. I'm paraphrasing, been put down, but we're going to, we're going to emerge. We're going to come mm -hmm. up again. And we're going to be a medicine to a sick and dying world. Kind of hmm. sounds like where we're at right now. So I've been, these two, I've been, I've been telling that to the church mm -hmm. and um, it's the older generation that I have to tell a Graham quote to, but what you described is what I feel, David. I feel like if the church doesn't get on board with what God is trying to do with native people, they're going to have that thing that you said, like, what the heck? We could have been mm -hmm. on board with this. Like mm -hmm. we, had, we didn't know we, how many times have the people of God said that in scripture? Mm -hmm. Like, well, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. there are a lot of surprises in scripture. I truly believe if you come be our friends, like my mother said, um, we can help each other heal. This is a horrible time in, in, in human history, mm -hmm. hi history. But every time we see like at the beginning of creation, we see chaos. The earth was form formless and void mm -hmm. and God speaks. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect opportunity for God to do this, this, this mm -hmm. work that only mm -hmm. he can do. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of it. I want you to be there. Mm -hmm. David, I just want to say, I want to say it in front of all of your, all of your guests, your listeners, that David has been a, ever since I met, met David, he's been a true advocate, but more importantly, he's been a true friend. David has always, oh, thanks, man. he's always got people He's always connected me. You gotta get to know Bobby Gray Eagle. You want to know how to do advocacy? You want to know how to be a good friend? You gotta maybe ask David. You know, like well, hey, uh, hey likewise. Hey, I, I, my, we, we have both been on different recovery tracks in the sense that yeah. hey, nobody, God, our life journeys. You know, God is one of those gods that thank God that he is at work and mm -hmm. calling people back to his own. It's, it, it sometimes isn't perfect. It, it probably isn't perfect in our lifetime. We probably never get to there and the full sanctification thing's another question, but, but I, I will just say, man, you have been uh, instrumental in my journey in, in reconnecting me to a love of people in general and certainly native people. Um, I, first of all, I, I think the first like three years of me, being in those spaces, it was just so important to just observe and just just be there. Y you know, you don't have to you don't have to have the right answers. You don't have to have the perfect theology. You don't have to have, um, you know, just some cheap trinkets or or things you're giving out or whatever. Just just be there. Just be in those spaces. Be consistent. Yes. Learn. Like take the, take those things in. And and yeah, maybe you get an opportunity to give back or, or lead in a certain way or, or be symbolic via worship or missions or whatever that involves. But um, yeah, thank yeah. you for being kind of that bridge to that world for me um, among the most amazing people I've ever met. Probably the funniest people I'm ever, <laughs> I've ever, I'm not even kidding. Native people will blow your mind. They're funny and they're just quick to laugh in a way that I think, man, taught me so much. Um, and just, um, very really another, precious another area Lord. that we're gonna we're gonna influence the church. I truly believe Solomon says laughter is medicine, right? I, I think we're gonna bring that back too. <laughs> I, 
Yes. I mean, but but truly, just people that are precious yep. to the Lord. I mean, just just some precious people. Um, for people that aren't just aware, it's just like there's there's just a lot of diversity among Native people as well. Mm-hmm. There there are hundreds of tribes you probably have never heard of. There's a new mapping feature that lets you just find out. Hey, yep. I I live in Colorado. Guess what? This is you tribe land. Go go look at that stuff. Like start reading this. Pr- start praying for Native people to not just come to know Creator. Um, because in some ways that's always been there, but just to yep. come see the the specificity of it in Jesus Christ. What's <laughs> offered in the full context of God loving them as native and as believers in Jesus Christ. Um, it's an exciting Amen. time in that yes. way. And, and thank you for being a part of it. Thanks for joining us. It's been fun. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Okay.